Hi, everyone. Good morning. We're ready to begin today's session um, on Circle CI and New Vector automating vulnerability scanning to secure your uh, CI CD pipelines. And we're going to kick it off with Aaron Stilwell from Circle CI. Um, if you have questions during the session, please enter them in the chat box and we will try to get to those um, at the end. And Aaron, over to you. Thanks so much. Yeah, thanks a lot. Uh, hey, everyone. Great to, great to connect. Uh, my name is Aaron Stilwell. I'm a solutions engineer here at Circle CI, working out of our uh, London office. Uh, my background is really in building software. I'm, I'm really a developer at heart. Uh, but my role here at Circle CI is working closely with our European based customers to ultimately get the most out of CI CD uh, on the Circle platform. Tracy, do you want to give a quick introduction of yourself before we kick off? Absolutely. Hi, everyone. Tracy Walker from New Vector Solution Architect. Uh, here to talk a little bit about New Vector and Circle CI Orbs. Perfect. So I'm going to give us a, a really quick introduction today uh, of Circle CI. I want to let Tracy uh, really be the focus of today's session. Uh, so I'm going to spend just sort of 10, 15 minutes um, giving us an introduction to, to the Circle platform. Uh, and Circle CI as a business, uh, and hopefully that will give everyone a fairly even kind of playing field in understanding how the platform works and ultimately how uh, Tracy on his side, how they've actually integrated Nude Vector into the Circle platform. So Tracy, unless there's anything else from your side, I'll kick off uh, and then I'll hand over to you in sort of 15 minutes. All good, Aaron. Thank Please you. Proceed. Cool. Great. So at Circles CI, our mission is primarily to make it as easy as possible to go from idea to delivery. So as a developer, uh, we want you to go from really commit to deploy uh, as quickly as possible uh, and with as little friction as possible. So we want to get out of your way and enable you to ultimately deliver ideas rather than spend time kind of maintaining uh, infrastructure or CI CD tools, uh, we want to really get out of your way and, and let you guys focus on what you do best. So at Circle CI, we were founded back in 2011 as really one of the early pioneers of the YAML configuration as code uh, CI CD approach that is now uh, become something of a standard in, in the CI CD space. We were originally conceived as a, a way of uh, continue continuously integrating uh, iOS apps, uh, but we've of course rapidly expanded outside that to accommodate almost every uh, every type of software you can kind of imagine. Uh, so CI/CD is really all we do. Uh, that is something we have now over 300 employees thinking about across the world. And at Circle CI, we're primarily a, a hosted, managed CI/CD platform in the cloud so that you don't have to worry about the nuances of managing infrastructure. Again, you can just focus on, uh, on doing what you do best. We've learned a lot in the last nine, 10 years, and we actually put out a report towards the back end of the last year, a titled the data-driven case for CI, where we really crunch the numbers across some of our user base to try and identify what really makes a high-performing technology delivery team. Uh, and we identified uh, a few interesting trends across a number of different metrics, namely things like lead time for changes, deployment frequency, mean time to recovery, as well as change fail percentage. So this is really a little bit beyond scope for today, but I wanted to just include a link here and give you guys a flavor of uh, the kind of metrics we look at to assess success uh, and you'll see here that customers who work with circle ci uh, they typically get workflows completed in less than 10 minutes uh, and can typically recover very quickly as well from failure so that's what we're about really empowering on behalf of our users and where our platform sort of sits uh, which is probably no surprise to those of you who are already familiar with hosted ci cd tools is really in the middle of uh, your source control, your VCS over on the left-hand side, namely GitHub and Bitbucket, uh, 
and your deployment environment on the right hand side, whether that's AWS, GCP, Azure, uh, Docker on-prem, uh, Heroku, whatever it is that you're, you're using. And one of the trends that we're seeing uh, more recently is what goes on between those two uh, areas has kind of expanded beyond the traditional build, test, deploy. Uh, and we're seeing much more automation go in as part of that process to delivering feedback. So today we're here to talk about uh, vulnerability scanning. That's one of the areas we see uh, going on in that kind of uh, delivery automation piece. Uh, security is a, is, a, is a big aspect that people are starting to automate more of, things like static application, security testing as well. Uh, but we also see much tighter integration with, for example, project management tools as well. Uh, we see people now spinning up dedicated testing environments, running end-to-end -end tests before going into production. So it's really expanded uh, quite far outside the, the traditional kind of just build, run some unit tests, and then deploy somewhere. On a more technical level, the way we uh, enable that is, as I mentioned earlier, providing a YAML-based uh, configuration as code approach to CICD that is uh, intuitive and easy to pick up for developers, even if you haven't used Circle CI before. Uh, we manage all the compute on your behalf and allow you to actually select, uh, depending on the task you have at hand, how much compute you need. So maybe it's a trivial lint job as part of your deployment process and you just need maybe one CPU, two gigs of RAM, uh, you can select that. Or maybe you have a really non-trivial build that you're processing and you need 20 CPUs, 40 gigs of RAM. You can allocate those resources to your different jobs as needed without ever having to wait for resources to queue. So you never have to you know, push some code and then maybe wait for some of your colleagues across the other side of the organization to finish their job before yours is going to get processed. We really want to eliminate that. We then go a little bit further in allowing you to split really big test suites across many machines at one time, again, to focus on getting through your, your test suite as quickly as possible. Uh, but we also have uh, a fairly diverse uh, set of options for, for compute. Uh, one of our most popular options now is just specifying a Docker image, and we'll pull that image, create a container, and then we can run your test in the container that already has everything you need pre-installed and is never subject to change. So you have not just fast, but also deterministic builds. We also have the more traditional Linux virtual machine-based approach, as well as Mac and Windows uh, VM uh, options available as well that you have root access to uh, and really full control over. We're going to be focusing a little bit later on before I hand over to Tracy around uh, reusable configuration. That's what we call orbs, which are pre-packaged pieces of CI CD configuration. And it's those that package mechanism that New Vector have leveraged to actually provide their own behavior uh, as part of your CI CD platform. And of course, because we host the whole uh, shop ourselves. Again, we're trying to allow our customers to think less about uh, the security implications. Uh, some folks working with uh, more traditional CI CD tools have to worry about uh, open source plugins, vulnerabilities that crop up, managing machines themselves, and so forth. But we really handle that burden for you um, with certifications now, such as SOC 2, Type 2, FedRAMP in the United States, and so forth. So before I just focus on those orbs and then hand over to Tracy. We'll just have a really quick look at one of my own projects that is running on CircleCI, just to see how these things tie together and allow us to, to run through the build, test, deploy process uh, of a project. Uh, the first thing to know about CircleCI is we are an OAuth-based application on top of GitHub and Bitbucket. What that means is when you come to CircleCI for the first time, you'll sign in with your GitHub Bitbucket credentials, and you have essentially a list of projects that you can pick from and get started building and deploying as quickly as possible. That makes it really, really easy to get started. And once you've gotten started, you'll see here we have a .circleci folder uh, in the root of your project. And if we click into that folder, we've got a config.yaml file, which holds all of our CI/CD configuration for this project. 
I actually have that configuration open on the right hand side of my, my window here so we can very quickly flick through that as we have a brief look at the project I've got to look at today. If I switch tabs, you'll see here that we've got a workflow on CircleCI. And a workflow is just a collection of jobs or an acyclic graph of jobs that we would like to work through to build, test, deploy, run vulnerability scanning, for example, whatever processes we need to run through as part of our deployment workflow. If we look at the YAML on the right-hand side of my screen, you'll see we're using really plain English to denote the relationships between the different jobs. So we specify here, we've got some build jobs and our test jobs require those build jobs be complete before we actually initiate those jobs. If we just take a quick look at one of these jobs, I'll jump into my, my build Ruby job. I'm actually using the, uh, if you'll excuse my, my screen flickering, I'm actually using that Docker-based approach to CI/CD jobs. So you'll see here that we can actually just specify a Docker image in my YAML. If we look at the right-hand side of my screen, we're going to pull that Docker image uh, from Docker Hub or indeed a private registry that you provide the credentials for. We'll spin up a container and then you can invoke what we call steps within that container that are denoted here in my YAML to run whatever we like within that particular container. So we spin up the environment. You'll see in this example, it's taken just three seconds. You'll see I've got the default two CPU, four gigs of RAM available to me for this job. And then we run through those steps one by one. CircleCI provides some pre-built steps, things like caching so that we can cache dependencies in the Circle platform so that we don't have to make round trips on every single build. And you'll see here at the very bottom of my job, I have a step that's called persist to workspace. And that allows me to actually save artifacts or dependencies from this job and then actually share those throughout my workflow in subsequent jobs. So even though this is all cloud managed and we get a nice clean container of VM on every single job, we can still share and save those artifacts. Now, sometimes tests fail. And if I switch my tab here, you'll see I have a job uh, that has actually had some tests fail. You'll see we have this really nice, concise, clean overview of exactly what's gone wrong. Uh, that's using the JUnit XML format to actually show us that nice, concise overview. Of course, we all know that sometimes failures aren't that easy to, to actually debug and diagnose. And so when that's the case, we can actually just rerun a job with SSH. And what we'll do is we'll restart the container or virtual machine. We'll inject uh, an SSH key pair. And you can essentially just copy and paste the SSH command. So you can log in, poke around, understand what's gone wrong and hopefully get back to, to, again, doing whatever you do best, which is actually building software. Before we have a quick look at orbs, and I'll, I'll hand over to Tracy, uh, I just wanted to show you a bit more of the more advanced capabilities we have available. And what I've got to show you that here is a job that is actually from Facebook's open source React project. And you'll see this job looks a little bit different from the jobs that we've looked at so far today because we have this parallel run section at the top. And what's going on here is we're actually spinning up 20 different instances of the same job, each with a Docker container with two CPUs and four gigabytes of RAM. What happens here is each one of these 20 different instances of the job will actually take one twentieth of the test suite and run those independently. So whereas this job would usually take 15 or 20 minutes, we've actually brought that down to just three minutes and nine seconds. Furthermore, CircleCI can actually use the historical data on how long each unit test takes to run to try and evenly distribute these different unit tests across different machines so that you don't have a huge variance in how long each of the, this, these machines take to run. Finally, I want to just talk a little bit about these, uh, these orbs, which are a key component, particularly for integrating with third party services. So orbs are reusable, shareable packages of CI CD configuration. So these are written in YAML, just like our core configuration we've already looked at, but they allow us to expose reusable pieces. We have a look at an example here. 
you'll see we just specify an orb stanza within our YAML, and then we can specify the format of an orb, which is a namespace forward slash in name and then version of the orb we would like to use. And each orb can export jobs, which are fully managed jobs, which actually specify what execution environment they need, as well as the different steps you want to run through within that execution environment. That's really the whole, the whole piece that we can just drop in our workflow. But they can also expose commands as well as uh, executors as well, which is perhaps a pre-configured Docker image that's maybe got some environment variables set. Um, a command is simply, can actually just be a sequence of, of bash commands or even our pre-built commands to, to cache resources and so forth, rather than leverage as we build out uh, and configure the jobs within our workflows. So these, these orbs are really uh, one of the, I would say, most sought after uh, highly valued features of the platform nowadays. And we have over 1,700 of these available. Uh, and more than that, you can actually build those yourselves and share those internally with your teams. And these orbs, not only are they opaque, written in YAML, anyone can view the source of them, but they're also deterministic. Once you specify a particular version in your YAML code, uh, it's never going to change. And that ensures that you don't suffer flaky builds. You know, maybe if someone were to try and change an existing version, that's simply not possible. So hopefully that's given everyone a quite brief, uh, but nonetheless valuable introduction to how our platform works and how we can leverage that notion of orbs to integrate and reuse uh, configuration. And with that, I'd like to hand over to Tracy to dive into how New Vector have leveraged that. And I did it for you, Aaron. So I've made Tracy the pre presenter. So Tracy, thank you. Key up your stuff. Absolutely. Uh, now let's show the other screen. Can you see my screen? Yes. Excellent. Fantastic. Thank you, Aaron. Um, yes. Yeah, so let's, uh, and what a great transition, uh, just talking about the, the orbs and, um, and full disclosure as a kind of a testament to how easy it is to get started with Circle CI. So, uh, two weeks ago, I had no experience with Circle CI. I've, my background is in software development, uh, we, you know, configuration management, doing builds for development teams and deploying those working in operations. So I've, my experiences span the gamut of developer into ops and, and all of the transitions that you have to make trying to get code delivered and, and put into production. Um, and I must say going from zero to, to even doing a demo or zero to hero, if you will, um, very easy. Uh, the tutorials, the documentation for Circle CI is so impressive um, and such a fun experience of just getting this um, up and running. Um, so hopefully the results uh, speak for themselves. Uh, let me start out just real briefly. We're, I'll do a quick cover of exactly what New Vector is, why you should care. Um, I won't go into you know all of the fud of this is how you could be attacked. Um, I do, however, like to use the Gartner uh, security model. This comes from a very recent uh, technical report put out by Gartner called uh, Containers, 11 Threats and How to Control Them. And they had a real nice kind of stack of kind of the security hierarchy for how you should address uh, security and so it's a kind of a nice checklist of all the different layers that you can be looking at when you're looking to secure not only uh, your applications but your CI CD pipeline and uh, so to talk about new vector and I'm going to talk about new vector kind of in simplistic terms we're not trying to cover everything that new vector to, new vector can do today um, but just as a general overview new vector kind of a talks to all of these things here at the top, these risk-based controls. Um, New Victor makes it possible to uh, audit file activity um, as well as act as a web application firewall. 
the CVE management, which is really what we're talking about when we're talking about scanning during bills during in your CI/CD pipeline. Uh, this is the specific topic to today, so we've highlighted that in red. Um, Behavior-based control. So basically being able to learn the behavior of an application and then use that behavior to uh, enforce security. Uh, so application behavior-based controls and, of course, layer seven network segmentation. I'll talk a little bit about this because it's a huge part of what New Vector does. Um, the quote that you see here is from the same technical report, basically saying that Whenever you hear about companies talking about micro-segmentation within your Kubernetes clusters or within your microservices architecture, um, layer seven network segmentation is definitely something that should be there. Um, done right, it can very much protect your application from unknown CVEs. Gartner did make this one quote that I thought was relevant that in the market, as far as network micro-segmentation, no one is really doing it more granular than what you can normally do with Kubernetes security policies anyway, with the exception of New Vector. So we'll talk a little bit about why New Vector is um, exceptional in the marketplace. So let's talk a little bit about New Vector. And again, I'm gonna simplify this significantly because there's a lot that we could talk about and that's that's not our purpose here. So there's really just two major components and these major components have a lot of different features and functionality. Uh, the scanning engine, basically from the time that a developer checks in the code, you can begin scanning with new vector and that can be part of your CI CD pipeline. Um, once, and we can also, and as we're gonna show with the new vector orb, you can pass fail a build as part of that pipeline. And you can have the flexibility of settings for every time that you want to pass that build. Uh, once you have deployed that image into a repository or registry, you can, new vector can also scan images in those registries. I will show that as well today. And we also plug into Kubernetes or OpenShift admission control. So you can have at the Kubernetes or at the cluster level rules that basically say if a image has too many CVEs or too many high CVEs and there's lots of different criteria that you can apply there, what is allowed to be deployed into a cluster. And finally, in those environments, staging, prod, et cetera, uh, we can also scan those images that are actually running in those environments. So from a scanning perspective, New Vector can cover you basically from the time you commit your code through the time that you are running in production, being able to scan for vulnerabilities as well as CIS benchmarks, benchmarks for Docker, Kubernetes for the platform, um, various things that we can scan for uh, within all of that. And again, the focus that we're really going to spend today is on this image inspection where we're kicking off a code auto, uh, a build automatically based on the check-in and get some results to the developer right away as to whether or not he wants or she wants to pass or fail that build. The, the focus here is on the Circle CI orb and of the CI CD pattern. There's a whole other piece to New Vector, and that is the network inspection piece. Um, and the reason why this piece is important is because in the real world, uh, we don't always have a chance to fix the vulnerabilities that are in our code, right? Um, sometimes we don't have time to fix every vulnerability found, or there may be times when uh, CVEs are found, but we don't have a fix for those CVEs. They don't actually exist. Or there's a, also times, well, as of right now, there's many CVEs that we're not even aware of. And so that really just leaves us with the network inspection component of New Vector. And the, the analogy that I like to use is, say you're gonna rent a car and you get into the car and it doesn't have a uh, rear view mirror. You would probably not rent that car. You'd probably go back to the office and complain that, hey, this car does not have a rear view mirror. Uh, I need that for safety. I need it to back out of my parking space, et cetera. Um, and that's really how we kind of look at scanning 
and traffic inspection. Scanning is kind of a historically based, you have to know what the CVE is, you have to have a way to scan those images for those CVEs, then you have to apply the fix for them, be aware that there's a fix, find the fix, apply the fix, test the fix, et cetera, et cetera. So scanning is a great way to plug holes in the dam, no question about it, and it should absolutely be part of your security approach. Um, but scanning is not traffic inspection, and it's not what you're really looking at day to day. Um, and that really just brings us to the network inspection component of New Vector, which is unique in the marketplace. Um, as you know, traffic within a Kubernetes cluster uh, is east-west, and there's an explosion of this traffic within uh, your microservice architectures. There's lots of network traffic happening internally. And while you may see some of the egress and ingress, visibility to that east-west traffic can be limited or can come from secondary sources like uh, kernel IP syscall filtering or IP tables or you know other metadata that can be collected that can give you inference to what your network is doing but isn't actually looking at the network. And that is the singular significant difference about New Vector. New Vector can actually see that traffic. Uh, we, as part of our deep packet inspection, we can see the traffic, we can see the ports, the layer seven protocol, as well as processes and file access. So earlier when I was mentioning that behavioral uh, learning automation, this is exactly what that gives us, is the ability to understand what an application is doing. And if we see something that is anomalous to that behavior, stop that behavior inside your cluster at the network level. Um, this is patented, both the way that we do this as well as our positioning within the architecture. And it gives way to several other features, such as security as code, which I will not demo today, but is a con you know, important component uh, that you may want to consider implementing within your Circle CI uh, pipelines because security as code gives you a way to set policies, and with New Vector gives you a way to actually enforce network policies for the port protocol, file access, and uh, process. So we can really wrap that behavioral learning into a YAML file that is security as code. You can check it in, version control it, apply it to your cluster, and then enforce those rules on those clusters based on these, you know, the basically the unique behavior of your own application. This also gives you some confidence that you have a zero-day countermeasure. Basically means that for a zero-day attack or for any unknown CVEs, you now have a way to protect yourself against the unknown and that should help you uh, sleep well at night. Uh, that's, that's basically all I'm gonna say about the network inspection. Again, it's a key component to what New Vector does. If you're not doing layer seven micro segmentation of your Kubernetes clusters, you might wanna take a look at it because you know, the scanning will allow you to understand what vulnerabilities are there, but the network inspection is going to prevent you uh, from being attacked for all the things that are not there in those CVEs. So the new vector orb. So this took me about an hour to come from literally zero to being able to use this orb. Uh, I was so impressed with the CircleCI platform. You can find this orb uh, at the CircleCI.com orbs link. Lots and lots of orbs there. Lots of uh, reusable uh, code for that'll fit your unique uh, environment. And the pipeline that I built, this is my first pipeline. There are many, but this one is mine. Um, this is going to be really easy. So basically, this is going to be a two-job workflow. The build job is going to build an image. Uh, I'm pulling code from GitHub, uh, so I will make some changes to my config file, which will trigger an automatic build. That build is going to deploy or push an image to my Docker Hub registry. And then that's where I'm going to call the build and scan, or sorry, the new vector scan image orb. And that orb is then going to scan that image that was just built for any CVEs. And then based on the results of that scan, we can either pass or fail the build. We check for the number of vulnerabilities that are found. 
and in the configuration, which we'll show here in just a second, I can change what I want that configuration to be. If I want to fail my own build based on if I find one vulnerability or find five vulnerabilities, I can then set this as a developer to say, well, I know I'm going to be notified for all the different CVEs. If it gets to be too many, fail my own build and, and force myself to go back and look. Maybe I shouldn't have so many, or maybe there's other criteria for like uh, admission control in Kubernetes that I know what the CVEs are going to be. The you know the limit for known CVEs are going to be for an image, so maybe I just want to make sure it's below that. But either way, you have the flexibility of either saying, yes, I know how many there are, but go ahead and pass the build, or I want to fail the build based on those criteria. So with that, let's take a quick look at the material here, and let's take a look at what these pipelines actually look like in CircleCI. So here is my build and scan image. Uh, this one, uh, two-step job, so this particular build failed. Um, and it's only got the two steps. I love the fact that you can actually see all of these different steps. For example, I added this where are my variables because I needed to know uh, for some certain variables what those were actually showing up as and when I was doing some debugging. So it was just really, I guess, intuitive how to use CircleCI how the jobs make workflows, how the workflows kicked off, how you can use different criteria for that. Um, let's take a quick gander at, in my particular, I forked this project from CircleCI, and in that .CircleCI folder, we have that config YAML file that Aaron was speaking of earlier. And so I call that new vector orb at the top, and then down here at the bottom, we have the actual orb where we're going to scan that image, I can point it at the registry. Uh, the instructions for how to fill all of this out are on the new vector site, as well as in the uh, the orb with the quick start guide here, um, and in the new vector documentation, which is here. There we go. Uh, the one thing I will say that gave me a little bit of trouble was creating a context for your organization gives you a way to apply environment variables for all of the projects. And one of the things that I happened to trip over was when I created the context here, where it says create a context for your CircleCI app, our own instructions didn't say, well, you should click on my context and add your environment variables there, right? Because it clearly shows we're in context, my context. Well, there's also a place where you can add environment variables at the project level. And so when I added my variables there, some of those environment variables did not work. So if you're a beginner like I was, helpful tip there that you know place your environment variables where they should be so that they are available to all of your different projects. Take a look at the second job here, the scanning job, which will actually do the scan, provide a full report. So here is the report that gets created. Um, what I want to do is I'm going to change in my configuration file here on GitHub. So here we go into live demo mode. So I'm going to set this high vulnerability to fail. I'm going to set that to be one. And I'll commit those changes to one. Commit those changes. And now we've saved those changes in GitHub. Now, if I go back over to my pipelines, you will see that we have a running pipeline here based on the check-in. So as soon as that check-in happened, it triggered a build. This build from a historical perspective will take about a minute to three minutes. So let's hope that that's fast. Um, you'll notice here that it says block this new vector scan image. So in the as we're running this orb as i scroll down here to the bottom where we've got the workflow so the entire workflow is made up of basically two jobs the build job which creates the image and then the new vector scan image which is going to require the build job and so that's why you see the blocked here is because it's going to wait until that image is created uh, that image as we get through the installing the client making the service and then we build and push that image to a um, 
a uh, repository that I have set up on Docker Hub. And basically, in, you'll see in here, I'm doing a push of uh, for this tag. So I do two pushes. I do a push where there's a tag that's automatically built. And I also do a tag where I tag it latest. So when I go to my uh, Docker Hub repository, let's refresh this. The latest image was uploaded a few seconds ago. So this is the image right here. And when we go back to our pipeline, and we see that this new vector scan image failed. So when we check the criteria here at the bottom, we said the criteria to fail was set at one, and we found one high vulnerability in that. So basically by implementing that orb, quick and dirty, it was able to, I was able to connect it, do that scan of that image and give me results that now as a developer, I have that feedback right away and I have that feedback right in CircleCI. New Vector is built to be used by both operations as well as development because as a DevOps tool, we're trying to shift as much as we can left so that it can be identified, configured, et cetera, earlier, security as code, all of those things where you can work earlier and in smaller chunks or get developers working alongside with their security folks and being able to review configurations and things like that. So we're very much intend for new vector to be used by developers and this is the new vector tool i'm just going to jump real quick to our assets and registries where i have this this is actually the repository that we just pushed that uh, those images to and you can see here that we've been doing scans of those images and here's also where you get the layered scan results. So as a developer, I can come here, look at my image, see the image layers that was used to create that image, and even click and find the vulnerabilities that were specific to that particular layer and understand that's where I've got to make that correction. We can kick out to the actual CVE, additional information about what it is, what the risk is, and again, this is the kind of conversation that you can have with your security folks as to, does this really apply to what we're doing? Do I need to take the time to do this and resolve that? And you can make adjustments there. I'll show one more quick thing on the platform here under our policies. Uh, we were mentioning the admission control. So this is another place where uh, as a team, we can decide what's going to be allowed to be run in, in a production environment. Obviously, this can change from day to day because new CVEs are being identified literally every day. So within Kubernetes itself, you can create criteria to say, we want a uh, you know, count of high severities, only those with a fix, all the way to labels, various criteria that you can use as far as saying, these are the rules, these are the environment and variables that we're going to set that set up the rules for allowing a image to be allowed in our environment. And with that, that is really the extent of the demo. Aaron, I don't, should we open it up for any questions? Yes, we will. Um, I do have a couple here. Um, and remember everyone who's attending, we can um, see questions you type in the chat box. So if you do have any, put them there. But I'll start with these. Um, for Aaron, does Circle CI have support for the caching of Docker layers? Uh, yes, uh, it absolutely does. So when you're building your own uh, Docker image, uh, we can natively uh, cache those unchanged layers on our side to speed that, uh, speed that process up. Okay. Uh, and for Tracy, what is the scanning technology that New Vector is using? Ah, great question. Uh, New Vector, we've built our own scanning uh, technology. So everything within New Vector is um, proprietary built. Uh, we're not using uh, open source scanners or uh, some of the scanning technologies that are available on the market. We really focused our scanning to, for one, to, to eliminate false positives and would also be very fast. Um, our scanning technology can actually scale in parallel or horizontally, so you can run multiple scanners at the same time. 
and we've actually had customers come to us looking to improve the performance of their scanning for large repositories, uh, significantly large repositories that would take uh, days, if not weeks, to scan the entire repository. And New Vector is able to scan those uh, very, very fast uh, in hours. So um, very fast scanning technology and proprietary built. All right, thanks. Um, and for you, Aaron, uh, how many jobs can you run at one time with Circle CI? Uh, it's really no no limit. Uh, we have customers who are doing in the, the thousands at any one time. Uh, our goal is really to ensure that regardless of your your compute needs, the important thing for us is that as soon as you commit code, you're triggering a build on the platform, you're never having developers uh, wait for, for infrastructure. So So we handle that. We have no hard limits on scalability. Okay. Uh, and Tracy, we have one here. How are admission control settings tied to the scanning results? Kind of like I was just showing, the scanning results from the build uh, come, you know, basically you're seeing the results right here as I'm showing on my screen. So okay. you're going to get those results within Circle CI. Um, those will be the same results that you would see in new vector as far as the registry so the registries are going to show up here i've got this registry and i've got all of the images which this is the same image over and over but but basically that tag there this these results and this layered scan is all going to be within within new vector the policy rule that the uh, the question is about is being set here under admission control. So this is going to use those scan results in that criteria for allowing that image to be deployed into that cluster. So they could be okay. separate. You could have a different admission control rule uh, saying no more than 10 CVEs it can be totally separate from the rules that you're setting uh, within your Circle CI pipeline. Okay, and this is, I'm going to give this one to you too because it should be a quick yes, no. Is New Vector, <clears throat> excuse me, deployed as an agent? No, New Vector is not. In fact, so New Vector deploys as a, as a, a container. Um, we have controller containers. These actually do the scanning. Scanning piece can be broken out. Um, these are not agents. These are not sidecars. Uh, they're just containers. The real enforcement comes with those enforcer. Uh, these are going to be deployed on each and every node. So we usually have three controllers that are, uh, you know, managing the policies, managing the API. Then the enforcers are going to be deployed on each node. They're deployed as a daemon set. That means you don't have to do any overhead for adding new vector. Again, you don't have to change any code. Uh, it doesn't impact your developers really doesn't impact anything. We install cleanly and we uninstall cleanly. We don't leave a trace. So we are an enforcer running as a container um, and we sit next to the virtual switch. That is what allows us to uh, uh, basically transparently inspect that network traffic that's happening between the nodes and between the pods. Okay, thank you. Um, and then I have one more for you, um, Aaron. How do you do, how do you handle deploying to staging development environments? Yeah, so that's uh, we actually have conditional syntax uh, in our in our configuration that allows for uh, only executing certain parts of the workflow depending on the branch or even depending on a tag. So that allows you to to essentially change the way you build test deploy depending on branch and tag uh, and so forth. We also have some more uh, advanced syntax that allows uh, triggering builds through an API and actually providing parameters. You know, if, for example, you wanted to uh, build your own command line tool for deploying to, you know, one-off environments, you can actually uh, program that to all still happen on Circle, but actually be linked to your own proprietary tooling rather than the VCS layer. That allows also for, <clears throat> you know, in the context of today, if you had uh, more broader end-to-end -end scanning with new vector that you that was you know taking a little bit longer than uh, you know it wasn't something you want to do on every single commit on every single PR again you could enable that so maybe only doing the full scan before you go to production for example if you wanted to do that you could okay great 
Great, thank you. <clears throat> Excuse me, do have any other questions? I don't think so. So um, I'd just like to say, if you do have additional questions, um, you can send them in the chat box directly to the presenters or send an email. I think both presenters have their contact information on their slides. Um, if you would like a copy of the slides, please uh, send an email to updates at newvector.com and we'll get that out to you. Um, and also for those of you still on, um, we in the handout section in the GoToMeeting interface, um, we have two great publications for you today. We have an ebook from New Vector called 10 Steps to Automate Container Security into the CI-CD Pipeline, and from Circle CI, Build Great Things. Um, so be sure to check those out in the handout section before you leave. Um, and the session was recorded, so you will get a follow-up email with the recording um, sent to you either later today or tomorrow morning. Um, so with that, I would say thank you for attending. And Tracy and Aaron, if you have uh, anything else you wanted to say to wrap up? Oh, nothing here. Just been a great experience uh, working with Circle CI. Great. Yeah, absolutely. Right back at you guys. Thanks a lot, bro. All right. Well, thanks so much, everybody. All righty. Bye-bye.